let's look at multiplying and dividing whole numbers and decimals. And we'll do so by way of a word problem. And here's the question. Sumira works part-time and earns $18.25 per hour. Last week, she worked 21 and a half hours. And then in the first part, we're asked to estimate how much she got paid last week. So let's pull out the numbers from the question. If she got paid $18.25 per hour, that means that she got paid $18.25 per, per means to divide, per one hour. And we know she worked 21 and a half hours, so let's put that number down. So we have to decide what do we do to these two numbers in order to calculate or estimate the amount she got paid. Well, we might notice that the units, when the numbers are written this way, cancel each other out. And therefore, we need to multiply these numbers to get the answer. Now that we've determined we have to multiply the numbers, let's clean up the workspace to remove the units. Okay, now we can start to estimate. And there are a couple of ways we can do this. Let's say we wanted to estimate to the nearest ones. So we find the ones digit, the 8. We look to the digit to the right. If it's bigger than or equal to 5, we bump up the number. In this case, it isn't. So we'll leave her hourly rate as $18 per hour. That's our estimate. Now we'll estimate the number of hours she worked to the nearest one. And using the same technique, our estimate is 22 hours. So let's go ahead and multiply these two numbers. 22 times 18, and we're using column multiplication. So the 8 times the 2 is 16. So we put a 6 down and carry the 1. 8 times 2 again is 16 plus the 1. The carry is 17. Next we multiply by the 1. and We make sure that we, when we multiply we put it in the same place column. So 1 times 2 is 2 because the 1's in the tens column so we keep it there. And again, 1 times 2 is 2. And we can add up these columns. We can put a 0 for placeholder that we're missing there and add up the columns. So this becomes 6, 9, 3. So our estimate of her pay to the nearest $1 is $396. Let's try another method. Let's estimate to the nearest $10. Again, we look at the digit to the right of the tens column. If it's bigger than 5 or greater than 5, we bump it up. So our $18.25 per hour becomes $20 an hour. And we apply the same technique to estimate the number of hours she worked. In this case, it would also be 20, 20 hours. And if we multiply these two together, our estimate would be $400. It's a straightforward multiplication. What you may notice is that the higher the place value you estimate to, the easier the calculation, but the less accurate the estimation. It's really your choice. Both of these are perfectly acceptable estimations. Okay, let's move on to part B. Here we want to calculate exactly how much Samira got paid last week. So let's pull out the numbers. She gets paid $18.25 per hour and she worked 21.5 hours. So we need to multiply these two numbers. So we're going to try the box or table method of multiplication this time. What we do is we ignore the decimals for now, and I'll put the 1825 at the top and the 21.5 along the side. Next, what you do is you put some diagonal lines in. And then for each cell, you multiply the corresponding numbers. So 5 times 2 is 10, and that means we put 1 and a 0, 1 in the 10 spot, 0 in the 1 spot. Then 5 times 1, which is 5, so that's no 10s and 5 1s. Then we do 5 times 5, which is 25, which is 2 10s and 5 1s. And then we move on to the next column. So 2 times 2, 2 times 1, and 2 times 5. So 2 times 2 is 4, that's, so that's 0 and 4. 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 5 is 10. And then we continue doing the same method for the next column along. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 5 is 40. And then the last column. 
So 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 5 is 5. Now what we do is add up the numbers in the diagonals, like so. So the first one on the right is only one digit, so we least just leave the 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. Then the next, 0 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0 is 3. And moving on to the next diagonal, 1 plus 4 plus 8 plus 4 plus 5 is 22. So we put a 2 down and carry the, the 2 over to the next diagonal. 2 plus 6 plus 1 is 9. And then in the other diagonal, 1 plus 2 plus 0 is 3. And finally, there's only a 0 in the last diagonal which doesn't change the value, so we'll just eliminate that. So our answer is given by the numbers around the outside of the box. So we'll write them down. That's 3, 9, 2, 3, 7, 5. But what about the decimals? Let's bring them back. The first number, 18.25, had two decimal digits in it. The next number had one. So we, the answer will have three decimal digits in it. So we move it over from the right three places to the left. So we place the decimal between the two and the three. And because we're dealing with money, we round to the nearest hundredth, or cents column. In this case, we'd bump up the seven to an eight. And the digits to the right go to zero. The digits to the left stay the same. So the exact amount that Samira got paid last week is $392.38, which is very close to the estimates we had previously, so we're in the right ballpark. Okay, let's move on to part C. In this case, Samira wants to divide her pay by 1.5, so she can put a part of her pay into a checking account and a part into a savings account. So we want to know what options does she have when she divides by 1.5. Let's bring back some numbers. Her pay was $392.38, and she wants to divide that by 1.5. So we can write it this way. That line means division. We can also write it this way. We can use the division symbol. Both of these mean the same thing. So let's set up our long division. First, let's take what we're uh, dividing by and write it down. And then we'll put in divided into her pay. First step is to remove any decimals in the number we're dividing by. So in this case, we'll need to move that decimal one place to the right. And if we do it there, we also have to do it to the number we're dividing into. So we move the decimal over 1, and that means it's removed, so the 1.5 becomes 15. Then we move the decimal over between the 3 and the 8, so we take it away there and place it between the 3 and the 8. The decimal has been moved over one place. Next, we place a decimal immediately above that decimal, so they're lined up, and then we begin our long division. We start with 15 into 39, and that goes in there twice. And then 15 times 2 is 30. Subtracting, we end up with 9 remainder. Then we bring down the 2. And then we find out how many times does 15 go into 92. And that will go in there 6 times. 6 times 15 is 90 with a remainder of 2. And then we bring down the 3. And then we see how many times does 15 go into 23? Well, it goes in there just once. 1 times 15 is 15. Now, to subtract these, we have to borrow from the 2. And so the 2 becomes a 1, and the 3 becomes 13. And then we can subtract we end up with a remainder of 8. And we continue. 
we'll bring down the 8. And then we'll ask ourselves, how many times does 15 go into 88? And it goes in there 5 times. 15 times 5 is 75. And we subtract, end up with a remainder of 13. Because we have a remainder, we can keep going. We can add a 0 at the end and bring that down. And then ask ourselves, how many times does 15 go into 130? It goes in there 8 times. So 8 times 15 is 120. And then we subtract and end up with a remainder of 10. Again, add a 0 at the end and keep going. So 15 into 100 goes 6 times, which is 90. And it turns out the 6 will continue to repeat from here on in. And no worries. The important thing is that because we lined up the decimals earlier, our answer will have the decimal in the right place. So 392.38 divided by 1.5 is 261.586 repeating. Now because we're dealing with money, we want to round to the nearest cent. So in this case, the 8 will become a 9. So our answer is 261.59 or $261.59. So this becomes one of our options. We can place that amount in either the checking account or the savings account. But what about the other option? Well, what we can do is we can take the 392.38 and subtract 261.59 to find out how much is left over. And when we do that, using our subtraction technique of decimals, making sure the decimals are lined up, we'll end up with... 130.79 or $130.79. That becomes our second option. So let's answer the question. Let's look at our options. Imagine we have containers for the checking account and the savings account. The first option would be to place $261.59 in the checking account and then $130.79 in the savings account. Or we could put the $130.79 into the checking account and the $261.59 into the savings account. Either way, the amounts add up to her total paycheck of $392.38. And there you go. Thanks for watching.